So a big part of living this nomadic life in a van is getting comfortable with sleeping in new places constantly. Stealth camping is a skill that will open up that much more freedom as you travel, knowing that there's always a place to stay. For example, if you're doing a long drive across the country and pull into a new town or city late at night and need a place to sleep. Like many, I was paranoid when I first got started, but before I knew it, I was cruising into cities without a worry of having a place to stay. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I go stealth mode in this van, a few different places I choose to park overnight, and a few pieces of advice from someone that's been doing this for about five years now. So let's go back. It's perfectly light out right now uh, for demonstration purposes, doing this at, in broad daylight, but um, normally we would pull in at night when we're ready to go to bed. There are different levels of stealth. Let's assume we wanna be as stealthy as possible. That scenario means we're probably in neighborhoods or we're by an apartment complex or we're in an industrial area. We're somewhere where we don't really want people to know we're here in the van. We want to eliminate any sort of red flags that there is someone in this van. Therefore, we don't wanna draw any attention to ourselves. Next to Sam's seat is my first window cover for the big window. There are two sides of it, silver and black. Now there's a reason for this. The silver is good to deflect sunlight. So when there's light coming in the window during the day right now, this is hot. If I wanna keep it cooler in the van, I'm gonna put the reflectic side out to reflect, to deflect that sunlight, keep it a little cooler in here. So that just cut out all that sunlight and it just blocks out that heat. And this actually looks a lot nicer too with the black on the inside. Uh, personally, I think silver in windows is a pretty big giveaway. So if I'm pulling up to somewhere where I really don't want people to know I'm in here, I will put black side out so it just looks like a dark window. So just, just like that, okay? And I make sure that there are no gaps so that there's no light coming through. So let's go to the back windows and I'll show you what that looks like. So for the back windows, I also have these reflectics um, and they just, they actually have magnets on them. See, they're already trying to stick to the metal. I just have the two on the top there. And then, now that's nice and blacked out. If I'm pulling up somewhere, again, where I don't want someone to see that, or I do care, I won't put these in the window. I will only draw this shade. So it's, again, just a dark window um, when someone's rolling by. You know, the headlights, this will shine in headlights. So. When we're rolling up to a place where we really wanna be stealth, like an apartment, next to an apartment complex, or an industrial area where we just wanna be a car on the street, we don't want anyone to think we're in there, then I won't pull up until it's time to go to bed when it's dark out and I already am ready to go. I don't need to make a lot of noise or a lot of movement. All I have to do is pull these shades, put that in the window, and the biggest thing with this is not turning on any lights or having any lights going on because you don't want to risk someone driving by or walking by. If you're trying to fly under the radar, just don't let any lights out. So just be ready to go to bed. And that's kind of the extreme side of being stealth. Here's the thing. I live in a big van with solar panels. People probably already know I'm in here. That's okay. I just, for me, don't wanna draw attention to myself and make a scene or be that noticed. Cause if you're, if, even if they do think I'm living here, as long as I'm quiet and like, it looks like a dark vehicle, there's really no harm. There's no proof that I'm in here unless I'm the one making noise and drawing attention to myself. But if I'm just at a campsite or if I'm in a parking lot and, or in a, you know, a rest area, I'm okay to be there. So of course I'm gonna just throw those in there up and then drop the shade, full privacy. Um, so that's the two different levels of stealth. This needs a little work, but normally I'll draw that down and we're pretty good to go. That's a blackout curtain. And then as far as the windshield goes, if I'm on a street like this in the apartments, I make sure there's other cars on the street. I'm not the only one. 
I have this windshield cover that you put in to you know, block out the sunlight. I won't put that in the window if I'm trying to go super stealth. Let's call it super stealth. I will only pull my blackout curtains that block the cab from the living space. Pull those and then I'll make sure these are nice. So I'll just do that if I'm going super stealth. All right guys, so let's talk about some of the places that I typically stealth camp. When I'm like traveling across the country, I'll typically look for rest areas, Walmarts that are okay, Cracker Barrels are a great one. Best case scenario, some BLM land, some free camping spots. Those are my go-to camping. But as far as stealth camping goes, if I'm in a city, a lot of times I will look for apartments. A nice big street with a lot of cars on it with just a, you know, open apartment, you know, a few, maybe a, a complex. What I won't do is pull into the parking lot that belongs to an apartment uh, because they usually have security and those are really for just the residents. So the biggest thing, if I'm, if I'm in a pinch, I will go, like I'm coming into a city and I can't find anywhere, any Cracker Barrels or, you know, places to stay, I will just go on to uh, Google Maps and type in apartments and look on Google Street View and make sure there are cars on the road and I can just pull in on the street later at night and have a nice quiet place where there's just a bunch of other cars. Also make sure you check on the signs. If there's any street signs that say you can't or residents only, just check on that. Sometimes there are weird street signs or st uh, street sweeping uh, signs. Just check on that. The other one is industrial areas. A lot of times I'll find these spots on iOverlander uh, where it's, there's trucks and other vans usually. And the best thing is, you know, save these spots on your map, on Google Maps or whatever map service you use. Just save them as a pin for the next time you roll through these towns and then you'll have your spots where you can stay. And it's not like starting from scratch every time you know, oh cool, I have that spot I can go to. That's that nice quiet industrial spot or that nice quiet apartment complex area. All right, so finally, here are just some lasting pieces of advice. There's some things to keep in mind from someone that's been doing this for, for about five years. Be very mindful of the parking lots you stay in. It's really tempting to find a Planet Fitness or a place that says it's 24 hours or just a big parking lot. I think it's more likely you're gonna get a knock in some of those places. They're, they are cracking down, they have security. I just try to steer clear of them unless it's, like I said, a Cracker Barrel. Um, Cabela's I've stayed at, like those kind of places that are friendly to travelers. Um, if you do get a knock, here's the worst case scenario. You might get a knock. Usually the worst case scenario is they're gonna ask you to move. In my experience, it's just like, hey, you can't sleep here. And then you say, okay, thanks, and leave. That's all I've ever seen in all my years of doing this. Just be prepared. Um, but a lot of times if you follow these steps and disclaimers and you know, it won't happen. It just won't. It's not that common unless you're not being smart. Trust your intuition. Um, if you don't feel right, if something feels funny, you pull in somewhere, you're like, eh, this doesn't feel right, leave and go to somewhere else because usually there's a reason it feels that way and you won't get good sleep anyway. Last but not least, just be really respectful uh, no matter what when you're in these areas and be courteous. Another thing, if I'm in a city for a while, I won't return to the same spot every night. I will rotate spots. So find a few different good spots in the city. There's a lot. Find those spots that you're comfortable with and rotate. This sort of overnight parking can easily give a van lifer a bad name. And unfortunately, people are ruining this all the time um, and not being courteous. So I just want to put that message out. Uh, just leave no trace. You know, people leaving trash and dumping, and it's, it's not necessary. And I, you do see it in cities, unfortunately, but um, let's change that. We can change that. I think every traveler, every van lifer nomad should know how to comfortably stealth camp no matter where they go, no matter what. Um, next to a park, next to a church, next to a apartment, no matter what it is, be respectful, be smart, and, and happy stealth camping.